One of the most challenging aspects for new users in, in an ArcGIS is understanding where the data comes from or how do you go out and get data that you can bring back and add to your map. Now the base map that we're looking at here in front of us that has roads and major cities and you know some of our, uh, in this case you can see the Hoosier National Forest, but when we zoom into the community level you can see things like parks and water bodies and those features. You have to stop and remember that all of this data was drawn by someone uh, within a GIS system and then shared with others, revised and edited, right? So it's this enormous collaborative process of thousands of users. And so there's data coming in from, from private industry. There's data coming in from federal agencies. But I just want to go ahead and clear some of that up. How do we go about getting data into ArcGIS Pro? Now, ArcGIS Pro has some... Uh, you know, really fantastic upgrades um, over previous versions that allow, you know, when it comes to getting data in here, they're not perfect, but they can be really beneficial. And one of those, I'm just going to go ahead and jump in. If you're not already on it, go ahead and clip over, you know, click over to your map tab up here at the top. We're going to go ahead and click on add data. And here underneath add data, one of the things that's going to go ahead and jump up here is, is that you can actually go in, you could go into a folder here and, and grab data that you've downloaded from somewhere else. We'll talk about that here in a minute uh, through the add data button. But the one I want to talk about in particular is actually, actually ArcGIS Online. Its companion is the Living Atlas, but both of these are basically Esri data depositories where anyone, and I mean anyone, can upload stuff. And so there's some problems with data availability, meaning that you might have to sort through 4,000 different layers to try and actually identify something that's of use to you, even though you typed in the right name. But let's just give this a shot. So I'm going to go ahead and use the search tools here in ArcGIS Online. And I'm just going to go ahead and type in Indiana and see what comes up. Right. And so when I type in Indiana, uh, a number of things start to pop up. There's a wetlands layer for Northwest Indiana, all kinds of other uh, information. One thing I'm looking for, uh, just to show you that it exists, is that Indiana building footprints. Let's see if it actually comes up right and turns out that there is a building footprints layer we can go ahead and double click on that and you're going to see that you have to zoom in to actually go take a look at these we'll go ahead and zoom to the layer real quick all right there we go it's it's actually coming in now Right, and so the building footprints layer pops in and you can actually see that uh, it's a polygon layer uh, that's been created. There's no data behind most of it because it was created with an algorithm off of aerial photographs. So again, very, very high quality data that we can just drop immediately right into this. But what if we wanted to know more, right? So, uh, or what if we can't find something? Well, a different uh, approach to actually going ahead and getting data into an ArcGIS environment is to actually go ahead and explore one of the available data libraries that exists out there. And so I'm going to go ahead and jump in and show you a couple of these real quick. One of these is called Geospatial Data Gateway. And what Geospatial Data Gateway is, is, is that it is a federal, uh, you know, federal library of GIS information that's been developed and main, is developed and maintained by a variety of federal agencies. Most of them are, in this case, are affiliated with the U.S. Department of Agriculture. There are, the EPA maintains its own, so the Environmental Protection Agency has its own. Uh, the Department of uh, Urban Development and Public Housing has their own GIS. So again, you've got to kind of go and do some searching for different uh, sites that are available. But I'll show you how to use this one because this is this is where I get a lot of base data for projects. So once you're here, you've got to know you've got to click on the Get Data button. Uh, and what it allows you to do is just really quickly go ahead and click in. Uh, Indiana and then I can come in and tell it which counties I want so it'll only give you county by county this way and I can click that if you want a statewide layer which again there's a file size issue that comes with this but you can go ahead and click on this where option uh, and go ahead and order by state I'm not gonna do that right now um, I, what I did is I've just jumped into Tippecanoe new county and what this will do is that all of this information is available for the county where Purdue is at right and so we could come in if we wanted LIDAR data uh, there's a, a file size challenge there you'd have to work your way around but you can download LIDAR information 
or you know you can come in and get watershed information and again it's telling me I'm trying to download too much at once uh, and it's because this lidar is so enormous um, and so but you can look through this and see soils information and transportation information and basically you go through and you pick the layers you want you click continue uh, all of this I mean we could come in and tell it exactly what we want an Esri file geo database would be fine. We're going to talk about geo databases here in just a minute. You can also download it as a shape file. Um, it, whatever uh, works for you. You don't need to, to change anything here in, in projection because it will, it should provide you with, uh, well, I guess it is forcing me to do it. And so I'm actually going to go ahead and just select because this is the one that I'm using right now is WGS 84, right? And then go ahead and hit continue. Basically, enter your email. As soon as it's the data has been packaged and is ready for you, they send you an email with a link. You jump back into the system and download the data uh, and bring it in. A different approach to this is actually go uh, here in Indiana, and most states have something like this. And so uh, you can go ahead and, and look out. Uh, you can go ahead and look, and basically any state, if you type in, you know, Illinois GIS Atlas, that seems GIS Atlas seems to be the best search term there. But if you go ahead and jump in like that, uh, you can go ahead and, um, you know, find a website that has, you know, this library of data. This one specific to Indiana. It's maintained by the state of Indiana in partnership with Indiana University and Indiana State University. Uh, you may have used this in the past. It looked very different. Um, the legacy website was set up as a pre-ArcGIS Pro environment. They've now made the transition over. And what that means is that, uh, you can, through ArcGIS Online, you, you sometimes are able to actually just directly download within that environment and bring data in. I actually want you to work through a slightly different process here today. But again, here in Indiana Map, you can actually click on the Map Viewer, jump in, go in and uh, take a look around just by clicking Add Data. You can, you can go and see uh, the different types of data. Let me actually go that way. Uh, you can go ahead and see the different types of data that they have available uh, for download. And you can, before you actually go and download them yourself, you can basically go in and uh, make sure that it has the information that you're looking for. In a second, we're actually going to download, um, we're going to download a layer from uh, the structure menu. And basically this is all of the structures in the state of Indiana that are uh, on the National Registry for Historic Places. And so uh, we're going to take a look at how that combines in, right? Once you, once you identify this, um, all you need to do to download it is actually jump back over here. You go and find the corresponding category. Take a look and make sure you read through what is it that, uh, you know, is being provided within the layer. So in this case, um, this is historic districts. I actually want the, the historic sites. And so I'd go ahead and click on that. I'm going to jump over here under download options. One thing to be real careful about is that you don't want to generate a new download with latest data. It's not impossible, but it, it can take 10 to 20 minutes uh, for this website to actually package information. It's not, it's not exceptionally well set up for that. So if it's possible, download a file that was previously generated. What that's going to do is go ahead and drop it into your download folder. It's already done downloading. And so we can go ahead and jump back in. One of the things that you do need to do from your download menu, and let me make sure that I'm on the right folder here for me, uh, is, is that you'll need to go to your download menu. So I went into my downloads and I copied it and I brought it back in and dropped it into my project folder. The reason for that is, is that it keeps all of the files that I'm working with in the same folder so that I know they're easy to access and go back to. The other thing that you're going to notice is that it's zipped. And what a zipped or a compressed folder means is that you have to come in and right click on that folder, go to extract all and hit extract. And you're going to actually see that I've already done this. And so I'm going to just skip that process. Um, and it will actually then create a new folder that allows for it. All right, so back to ArcGIS Pro, right? So when I come back in here, uh, I'm going to go ahead and use my bookmarks, and I'm going to zoom to Indianapolis real quick. Um, and now that I'm here in Indianapolis, uh, the thing that I need to do is go to my catalog. And you can see that my catalog was actually hiding from me because I was working on something else. Um, and so I needed to go click there. But underneath your catalog menu, what you're going to find is that you can come down to Folders, and you're going to have a folder that has the same name as your project. 
and underneath that you're going to find this AGP uh, or underneath that uh, you may find your your downloaded folder that you extracted already if it's not there you need to come back in and click refresh and as soon as you click refresh you should be able to go ahead and grab it bring it in and drop it into place so now in theory if I zoom in to the neighborhood scale where the buildings start to show up again I'm going to have to give it a minute. What should happen is, is that we should now have the building footprint uh, for all of these structures in addition to the location, so point locations of uh, each one of these national uh, buildings on the National Registry. All right, so you can see that building footprint is starting to show up there. Um, and Although, actually, it looks like that building footprint might actually be for somewhere else. So, let's go ahead and fix our mistake. Again, this is one of those challenges with using uh, the data, is that I knew the name of the, the data layer I was looking for in ArcGIS Online. I'd already downloaded it previously, and uh, it still didn't come up. So, the first time I searched for it, I actually searched for Indianapolis and not Indiana, and it, there it is. All right. Building footprints of Indiana... This should jump in. There we go. Now we've actually got it. I'm going to go ahead and remove the folder that didn't have all the information. But now on top of that, I've got uh, this historic information. And so I can actually zoom in. And now I now have the footprint and the uh, designation for each one of these. And so you can actually go ahead and click on that layer. And I can find out that's the Brookside building. Um, in the attribute table, it'll actually go ahead and give me that information about that. So again, this is how we're starting to stack data layers together to kind of work within this. So one of the things that I want to challenge you to do next is that the last way that we, we go about, oops, I went all the way out to Indiana again. All right, let me jump back into Indianapolis. Last thing I want you to do is, is that how do we create data uh, for use in ArcGIS? Well, the last thing is to do what everybody else has done before you, which is to draw it yourself. And so at the moment, I'm actually going to go ahead and turn off my footprints because there's a lot of processing uh, going through the graphics processor to get that to work right. I'm just going to say that if we wanted to identify a study area, Again, this can just be a simple polygon um, that if we were going to focus in on a particular location, say like the Irvington neighborhood over here, uh, we could actually go and probably find a boundary for the Irvington neighborhood and, and use that. But let's say we don't need to be that specific. Well, again, this gets back to drawing. And so I just want to show you really fast how you would go ahead and draw. Again, as we go into our folder structure, one of the things that when you create a new project it does is it creates a geodatabase with the same name as your project. A geodatabase is a special folder specifically for storing spatial information. And one of the upsides to that is, is that when we want to draw or create our own layer in ArcGIS, we can click on, right click on it, click New, go to Feature Class, and what's going to happen here under Feature Class is, is that I'm going to just call this study area test uh, and I'm just giving a name to a new layer that I'm about to create and I'm going to draw a polygon here in a minute and so since I want a polygon uh, you can also select lines or points or you have some other options here but polygons what I'm after uh, go ahead and click next now if I wanted to add attributes I could build the table out behind it but I don't Click next again. I'm going to go ahead and let the default happen here in terms of the spatial reference. Uh, and basically, there's nothing else I need to do. So I'm going to go ahead and click finish. It takes a minute. Now, in some cases, this can take four or five minutes uh, for it to actually go ahead and create this file. So I'm going to pause real quick. And if everything went successfully, you'll actually see that uh, it'll have dropped in a new layer for me over here. Now, to go ahead and draw, all I have to do is go up to the Edit tab. Uh, I'm going to go to create. Underneath create, I'm going to jump in over here to and find my study area test. And I'm going to click on the polygon. And let's say again, I wanted to focus on Irvington. All I'd need to do would be just go ahead and draw out and then double click. Uh, hit escape on that. Um, and if I'm happy with that, I just run up here and I click save and save all my edits. And over here, I can actually go ahead and uh, underneath selection, I can go ahead and hit clear selection. And so what you end up with here is, is that you end up with a self-defined boundary. I can go ahead and zoom in on this. Uh, I can move it down below the building footprints, 
move those building footprints up actually uh, go ahead and turn those back on and what you'll see is is that I now have a study area I've defined with two layers of information that I've created